Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 10, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this was a weird episode. So, it was a mixed bag for me. I'm not sure about you guys, but there was some shocking moments towards the end of the episode where I felt like it all kind of added up to what it was building towards and I really liked the ending. However, I do have quite a few complaints as you guys know. I haven't really been complaining much recently, but we're going to do a little bit of complaining in this video because I think some stuff was a bit off mainly to do with the writing. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you don't mind a little bit of ranting I guess a tiny bit because I don't know it was like a mixed bag episode for me but let's first talk about how this episode starts so you have Speed Force Nora against Dion this is what we had at the end of last episode it's a direct continuation on from that you have Barry Allen being referenced as our father by Speed Force Nora and I thought it was weird because I mean she hasn't referred to him as like father at all before and it just kind of sounds it off and I also think it sounds off when all of the other forces say sis or brother or anything like that or they act like siblings fighting it just seems a bit off because it feels very forced and it feels like you know they are trying to get into this family drama when there has been no family drama before and suddenly they're calling Barry and Iris oh my father my mother my brother my sister and I don't know, it just felt like, you know, a little bit cringy. So that's just my own thoughts and opinions. Again, you don't have to agree with me. Tell me if you completely disagree with me in the comments below, or if you do agree with me. Okay, so Alexa is alive, and they share the same cosmic genes that's revealed. So they are all connected on a bigger level. So there is that sort of family explanation for, you know, the Team Flash side of things with what they're doing with Alexa. And you have reports of spontaneous lightning all over the city, aka this is Barry's firstborn, aka the Speed Force who was going around. Again, that reference to firstborn still doesn't really click and it feels a bit forced. So Nora is busy going around and obviously she's already got to Dion who have some sort of agreement by the end of this episode because they do come back. And we will get to that ending very soon, we will skip forward in a moment. However, let's continue with this, so yeah, Nora is getting to the other forces first, then we get to meet Psyche, he visits someone he knows, and then it's revealed at the crime scene that Psyche is after these six billionaires who he used to be friends with. Again, that is like a common trope, like a lot of these guys who get like whammied in lots of episodes throughout The Flash are like billionaires and like super rich people and... You know, they normally have links to the villain, and then you have that one big confrontation scene where you have Bashir, who is Psyche, that is revealed in this episode, where he goes off against that lady in the street, so one of those six people, and we'll get to that in a second. And so, we go back to with what Joe has been doing, and we have Kramer returning, she references Patty Spivert, Julian Albert, they come up on the screen. Thought that was like a nice little callback easter egg for us, fans of those characters. And so she's still on the meta thing, she wants to talk to Barry, but obviously by the end of the episode she doesn't get time to talk to Barry. That doesn't actually pull through because Joe actually resigns. Now that was a big twist that I wasn't expecting, but from all the struggles he's had, it kind of makes sense that it was leading to some sort of big twist with Joe. However, let's continue on with the other kind of main storyline with the forces. So yes, in this episode it's revealed who Psyche actually is. His name is Bashir. Team Citizen does some digging about him and they explain that his parents died and then his foster parents died in a plane crash and he thought he was lost in the world and he has lots of trauma essentially and so they reveal that he wants revenge with all of these rich kids that he's after because they abandoned him just like his parents both abandoned him in different ways and so this is kind of his reason for going after rich people and in this episode Bashir also 
has extra powers. He has this kind of tentacle power. And at this one point where Team Zitzen is next to Psyche after he's going after that lady in the street who he knows. And that scene felt a bit off to me because you have Team Zitzen in the background and they literally say nothing and they don't do anything. Whereas really they should be calling Barry at this point when he's literally masked up in the street and this lady is just like talking to him and Team Citizen is just standing there and they literally do nothing until he starts attacking her and at that point Flash comes in, he zooms in, he gets Team Citizen literally out of there before he gets attacked by those manifested tentacles and so yeah that just felt a bit off like in terms of continuity like why would Team Citizen be there? to just talk afterwards like whilst he is attacking her and I don't know why they didn't call Barry at that point but that's just like a logical issue I think and that's just something that I noted down in my notes that kind of didn't really make sense anyway so let's continue with this so with the Kramer stuff she brings in an illegal Metacure bullets and so you're like whoa like Jesus chill out <laughs> And Joe has everyone against him, including the governor who has authorized these bullets, even despite the progress they did last episode. And so Joe calls on Kramer again, and, you know, he basically resigns at that point. So that is kind of what's going on, and we're going to see more Kramer and more of this storyline, which is kind of interesting. Like, obviously, you're meant to hate Kramer, and I do hate Kramer. However, I'm interested to see what Joe actually does apart from resigning like is he gonna do something more to stop her okay so let's continue with this back to the four storyline so you have Fuerza who is being tested out throughout this episode she escapes at one point she attacks Cisco inside the speed labs and Cisco goes flying and you know that leads into a couple of scenes with Cisco and also his girlfriend's obviously there Camilla and Cisco reveals that he's clueless about what he's supposed to be doing. He talks about how his worst fear when Psych attacked him was about him being in Star Labs 40 years from now, still working there, and he's the only one there who's left. Like, everyone else has left, and he hasn't tried any other opportunities. He talks about, like, how he is qualified for so many jobs, but his fear is to be stuck here forever, so this is obviously leading him towards, you know, leaving the show that is definitely 100% what's happening right there so all of the forces in this episode they have full control of their powers and like over the last few episodes as well and it's kind of weird that Alexa is like the one who hasn't got control however I do kind of get it because she is the strength force and her alternate identity is a whole different creature like it is a different person and so you have this scene with Caitlyn and her where they draw heavy parallels to what happened with Caitlyn and Frost and how they work things out and by the end of the episode Alexa agrees to go and help Barry to take down and actually get through to Bashir aka Psyche and she is able to figure out what is going on with Forza as she takes control of her inner self and she gets into her and now she's able to control Fuerza, which I thought was very cool actually and I really liked that bit and so Barry is totally right in the argument against Caitlyn about needing Alexa because Alexa is very important in this situation however I do see the flip side with what Caitlyn was saying now this leads into what we have next so yes Alexa agrees she comes Barry goes and we see Bashir attacking the last guy from that billionaires club and that's at the point where Flash turns up, he gets the guy out there, and they have the confrontation with Bashir, and Bashir says, like, one cringy line saying, like, oh, I have a baby sister, and you're like, bruh. And he also refers to Barry as dad, and if I don't have to emphasize again, like, you know what I'm gonna say, it's kind of cringy, right? However, past that, and past it not being such a great fight scene, because, I mean, the CGI was just, like, a little bit stale, I would say is probably the right word, like, there's nothing wrong with it, however, there wasn't much oomph at all, like, no proper engagement into the fight, because it wasn't really a fight, it was kind of like a standstill fight, but the whole point of this scene is Bashir is finally getting around to it, and they 
are able to stop fighting, they talk to him, and they become a family. So that was like their whole goal, and that's why this episode and next episode is titled Family Matters. So they're trying to get through to all of the forces, and so you have them back at Star Labs. He actually shows up, Team Flash is on their toes because they don't know if they can trust the forces. However, they show up and you have this sort of sibling rivalry kind of beginning between the two of them. This leads on to the ending of the episode. So the cliffhanger is that they're talking for like a little bit, like a couple of minutes. And then suddenly out of nowhere, Dion appears with Speed Force Nora. So they return. And this was completely shocking, and this is where the episode kind of turned around for me. Like, I like some of the bits throughout the episode, however, this twist ending really sold it. And this was this type of scenario I was waiting for. And so you have Dion, who is supposedly being forced to work with Speed Force Nora, as he says, I'm sorry, just before he slows down time. And Speed Force Nora uses her Palpatine electricity coming from her hand and she kills the Strength Force again, and the Sage Force, and it goes through Iris. So, what is happening here? Well, I think there is a way for them to be revived again, and I'm not 100% certain that they are dead, but that is the impression that we are given by the end of the episode, because you see Barry's reaction, he's like, oh my god, what's happened? Iris is on the ground along with them, so is Iris dead? We have lots of questions, however, her shooting the lightning did actually finish off Alexa last time, so I don't see a reason why they aren't dead in this situation, because it's point blank shooting the lightning, basically electrocuting them, and it's going through Iris. I think Iris is actually going to survive only because she is the lightning rod. Like, that's what they've been setting up. And, like, she has a form of speed force inside of her. And I think it going through her is going to be fine. But she is definitely going to be affected by this in some way. And I think she could be, like, on the brink of death or something. And so, yeah, to conclude, this was a kind of mixed bag episode for me. It was a bit of a weird episode in terms of writing because. They were trying to really force the family aspect of it, and I'm not so sure that stuff worked. However, you had a great twist ending and a couple of great scenes throughout this episode. So, I really did enjoy it overall, even though there was points where I was cringing. So, let me know in the comments below, what do you think about all of this? Remember, Superman Lois is back on and just aired. We're going to be having my Superman Lois review out later today, so be on the lookout for that. Also, a trailer breakdown for the next episode of The Flash, episode 11, is coming very soon. But for now, click here to watch my latest video, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.